Hoseki no Kuni, or Land of the Lustrous, is Orange's adaptation of the manga by the same name. Studio Orange is known for doing shows like Black Bullet and Dimension W. This isn't a show that I went into realizing what it was. In fact, seeing the synopsis of the show made me think that this was some kind of weird Steven Universe parallel. Though the manga was around first, so let's not point any fingers here. I originally got clued into this show through a gif, and through this gif, I, like many others who saw this show, realized that this was fully CG. But damn all hell if this show doesn't look completely awesome in its CG beauty. If you're not convinced that this show is something you should watch after all of that, then stick around and hopefully I can convince you to give this show a try. I was happily surprised by this gem, pun intended, of the season, and just through the 7 episodes it has, I'm already interested in its IP as a whole and might actually move on to the manga if they don't adapt more. And that's really saying something. The show had me captured from the very first episode and I never looked back. Land of the Lustrous is set in the future, where humans have been wiped out. However, this doesn't mean that life is extinct. Instead, any life remaining on Earth escaped into the ocean when the Earth was visited by six stars that split to become six different moons. Through a vast number of years, life had eventually decayed and been restructured as gems. These new life forms are immortal and genderless. However, they are under threat from the Lunarians, these mystical moon dwellers who attack the gems in hopes of capturing them and using their bodies for their own purpose. After all, these are life forms made of beautiful gems ranging from diamond to the showrunner Phospholite. So that's the state of Earth in Land of the Lustrous. We have immortal gems born from the sea, and the Lunarians that come from the moon to capture them. They aren't necessarily in war, but it's just a constant conflict that these two factions have to deal with, as they're among the few beings left on Earth to even cause conflict. And what this means is that we have action. The action scenes are nothing short but breathtaking. And it's not like this show primarily is a show about fighting either. Instead, what makes the action scenes enjoyable is the fact that they bring meaning to every fight. It isn't just the fact that they are in conflict and that they are immortal that they fight and do the things they do. They could have easily showed us a plethora of amazingly animated fights and that was a show, but they used their fights almost sparingly. The action found with Land of the Lustrous range from moving the plot forward to showing character and development. And I really appreciate when action can be traced to not only show me this spectacle, but to also have weight and mean something to the story. I don't just want these fights to happen without some kind of purpose. And the main character, Foes, really does gain a lot from many of the action scenes that she's involved with. More so, these ongoing battles are implemented organically into the show. We aren't just all of a sudden fighting for the sake of spectacle, but there's a reason why these fights are happening in the times that they are. In this way, the meaning of the fight and the actual implementation all coincide in a nice bundle that really enhances the action and leaves me just as befuddled as the main character, and leaves me wondering about what just happened and what the fights mean more than, you know, just the fight. And many of these action scenes also bring about another aspect that I find really entrancing about the show, and it's something that I'd like to refer to as being hauntingly beautiful. These hauntingly beautiful moments for me are really a mix between the fact that none of these characters can die and the animation. This is where I see the busy work of the show really come together and how much more I appreciate them using CG. These hauntingly beautiful moments can really only exist in the form that it does with a show like Land of the Lustrous. I feel like these moments of beauty and set pieces in the same way that they look amazing are also shocking for the sake of the story. 
they hold meaning as much as they hold my attention. This juxtaposition of horror and aggression with beauty really pushes the show's setting as well and the atmosphere in a way that I never really would have gotten through just the plot. It adds an amazing quality of life for watching the show, and I really appreciate the craftsmanship of the CG and those who worked to make these moments really pop out. But that's not to say that the show isn't beautiful in its own right. <laughs> As I began, this show is chock full of beautifully animated moments that you can't really get the same effect from if not for the CG. There's beauty in shows made from KyoAni and A1 Pictures, you name it. But that same beauty is different from a show animated through CG. It's weird to describe, but it feels tangible in a way, and it's probably because it's 3D, you know, having depth makes anything feel tangible. But it's also in the way that these characters are gems. It makes sense to CG this anime to express that feeling of solidness and fragility, but it also imparts these moments of beauty that only gems can display. It adds depth and tangibility, but also its own visual idiosyncrasy that for me sets the show apart from practically any other show I've watched. It's really a visual treat and that imparted with meaningful scenes and an interesting progression is a really good package. Moving away from talking about action visuals, the other elements of the show like the plot and the characters are also elements that I find really good. Again, this conflict between the gems and Lunarians isn't really a war. There really is a push for an action-oriented plot, and the action happens in these organic ways that fit with the world building anyway. The plot itself though mainly revolves around this mystery of opening up and learning of the world that many of the characters are ignorant about. This show really delves into Foz's journey of trying to find herself as being the youngest gem around. Well, she is 300 years old, but young in their terms. And to branch from that, the show is almost derivative of a character study, wherein each episode and arc has a new gem that Foz shadows. So in that sense, it is very character driven, but that's not to say that with each new arc, the main story doesn't update. It's not episodic in that way. In fact, it's this overarching storyline that follows the characters that makes me really look forward to what happens next. Land of the Lustrous is very mysterious and leaves just enough out that draws me in even when they're doing these deep character analysis you get the best of both worlds. And the characters really are a treat to follow. You get a wide variety of personalities and yeah, there are some tropey things going around, but Foz is really a treat to follow for me and her antics are always amusing. And even if you don't enjoy Foz, I feel like with the net of characters, you'll find at least someone to latch onto. That's the beauty of having such an expansive cast and at the same time, also delving into some of the characters so that they don't all feel distant and uncharacterized. But of course we don't get that treatment with every gem, so there will be times characters will be left more or less shafted. To close off, I'd also like to give Land of the Lustrous props for using actual details about gems to make their characters. For example, every gem in real life has a hardness scale that determines how strong they are. The main character, Foes, is based on the real life Fossilite, which I'm not saying properly I'm sure, but you know, bear with me, that has a hardness of 3.5. And in the show, she has a hardness of 3, which they rounded down, but still. Another example is Jade, which has a hardness of 6 to 7, and in the show, has a hardness of 7. Apart from the scaling that determines their position as gems, other information such as special properties are also used to determine character traits. Let's take Cinnabar who in real life is a gem that contains mercury, and that aspect of containing this poison relates to our actual character in the show. It's details like this that really adds to the world of the show, and grounds it in some place in our own reality. Without needing to create some complex system or attributes, most if not all of what you might need to know about the characters can be traced from the real life counterpart. What's missing is the personality, and that's the job of the show to focus on. Getting all the stats of the gems pre-built by using accurate representations saves them so much time in needing to forge this other aspect of the world. It's also fun to learn about gems in an anime, so props to them again. Land of the Lustrous has been such a surprising ride this season and definitely the unsung gem that needs more love, much to the aversion of many fans of its CG, but rest assured the show looks absolutely stunning. And beyond its very well crafted CG is this mysterious and vast world filled with beauty. 
the action is done in part not only to show us how awesome they can animate action scenes, but also adds to the show. The beautiful moments range from these hauntingly beautiful set pieces to peaceful beauty that all give development to our characters. This is a very character driven show, but that doesn't stop its overarching plot from creeping in. This is a show that I can't recommend enough, and it's definitely one that at least should be given a free episode treatment for those who are still unsure. But anyways, that was Analyze. Thank you for watching. This was a episode review style that I don't really do much often, but I, I am enjoying it and I would like to, you know, promote shows like this more often. If you haven't seen my other videos, we're currently doing a Kino series right now and we also have Girls Last Tour up. So if you're interested in those shows, maybe give those a try. Anyways, I'm Brian signing up.